Hello my friends, welcome to the PC Elitist, a channel dedicated to video game commentary and discussion, always from the PC perspective, the greatest platform for gaming. My name is Woodsy. My name is Shepard. And Modern Warfare is out, and according to Metacritic, it's a fantastic game. And also according to Metacritic, it's awful. <laughs> Let us just take a moment to reflect <laughs> on how we saw this coming. We did. The editorials, the... The puff pieces by IGN. <laughs> they I... mailed it in. They... All of them. <laughs> no, but remember, five reasons why uh, Modern Warfare 3 won't disappoint. And they're the worst five reasons you've ever seen. It's yeah. like, I could come up with five reasons why... McDonald's won't disappoint next time you go. It's basically those five reasons. So, Modern Warfare 3, for the consoles, got an 88 or an 89 from the online periodicals. And an 81 for the PC version. The user scores, however, and we're not talking about a small sample size here. We're talking about several thousand at this point. They range anywhere from 1.7 to 3.1. They average a 2.5. Out of 10. Out of 10. Might as well be out of 100, though. So, uh, average of, of out of 10 for the critics ranges about an 8 to a 9. Yeah, I, I'd say 87. 87. 86. Out of 100. Out of 100. And 1 out of 10 for pe for users. 2 out of 10, yeah, 2 and a half. 2 and a half. But yeah, we're talking about a 6 point difference there. See, you know what? I love Called it. I love <laughs> Just saying. And we're not alone. We know the rest of you called it, too. You PC enthusiasts out there. We yeah. all knew. We we really need to thank... I, I think we need to thank Modern Warfare for doing a service, for always putting the spotlight on the worst parts of the gaming industry. <laughs> They're so good at it. And they come up with things you know, like this. Thank you for pointing it out and giving us such a great example. What I think is really interesting is... And, and we've read a lot. Probably between the two of us, we've read at least 100 of these reviews from the users. <laughs> Uh, and from the uh, periodicals, but uh, the negative ones all say the same thing. We, it's the same damn game, right. which they've been saying about the last two Call of Duty games. Right. It's the same damn game. It, you know, a lot of people say it's same graphics. The story was predictable and not in a good way. And it's and, three to four hours long. Yeah, and what that tells me is not only did we see it coming, they saw it coming. Right. And I don't know what they expected. The last two Call of Duty games, they expected it to be better, different, innovative, and it wasn't. Right. Definition of insanity, <laughs> doing the same thing and expecting a different result. And I, I don't want to hear anybody say, well, you haven't played it, so how could you... You know what? I've been on the planet long enough to know how shitty a Call of Duty game is at this point. Modern Warfare 3, I don't need to buy it to know exactly what I would get. I've watched videos that people have posted on your very own YouTube. It just looks bad. It, it, it looks not, not like innovative bad. It looks the same bad that we've seen the last few games. Right. It, it looks arcadey. It looks crap. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's hard to say. It's like, to me, um, what do you say a game? To me, it's Counter-Strike, pretty much. Like that Adul small... Adult up... More yeah. fast-paced Counter-Strike. Yeah, yeah. it's. I mean, that. to me, mm -hmm. um, what baffled me, and this hit me earlier today, I was thinking about, because of another subject I'd actually want to talk about, where when you review, and I'm just going to jump real quick, when you review a game like Battlefield, is it really fair to take in the single player in the count in the final review? Yes. It is? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's the game. It's the game. Take it for whatever it is. I have a kind of an argument just a discussion because of that, but anyway, um, when I first played Modern Warfare, Modern Modern Warfare, uh, Modern Warfare One, mm -hmm. uh, what I I played the game and I liked it, and then I tried the multiplayer and it felt like oh they just kind of tacked on this crappy multiplayer. It's entertaining, but it's nothing nothing good. Mm -hmm. And then it's death matchy, it has death no matchy. Death. I have no interest in it, and that's what took off. Everyone loved it. And I was baffled. I'm like, that's what you're playing, It's really? been hailed as the world-class multiplayer for shooters, and it, it's because they they revel in the fact that they have 
near infinite customization of your kits and awards and gear and you know I took in in COD 4 I took my character all the way up to max rank Modern Warfare 2 I took mine up to the low 40s or something and they that's what they hang their hat on is being able to customize your kits and this that and the other for me the diversity of gameplay means infinitely more than the diversity of oh well, how many kits can I customize and right and, so, and I will hand it to I do like that being able to quick select kits and I wish Battlefield 3 had some kind of mechanic like that but yeah it's if your gameplay has no depth if it's every map is the same battle scenario right and I've played a lot yeah if I have to attack this building at nearly the same vector every game like I can have no other strategy you know Battlefield 3 is great because Okay, I've attacked a base a hundred times. This time, I'm gonna go way around and come on the other side, or you know, do some, or get in a helicopter, or try to land on the roof, or something different. I could do something different and be creative. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'll sneak up with my uh, support class, just see for a wall open, and go in that way. Yeah, you know, like there's just so many things I could do. And I think, and the last thing I want to say about the user reviews, because we don't want to spend the entire video gloating about how awful Modern Warfare 3 is, because there's a larger issue we want to get to. The positive user scores. Right. They don't... I've only seen a, a small handful out of like over 100 reviews that say, I genuinely like this game. It's innovative. You know, it does this, that, and the other things, which are just aren't true. Right. Um, but what they say is, I honestly feel this game's like a 5 or 6. But because I see all the haters out there, I'm going to give it a 10 or a 9 just to boost the score a little bit. Right. That's absolute garbage to me. Just as garbage as what you and I have talked about, where someone says, I couldn't get the game to start. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Complete well, nonsense to rate a game like that. Looking through the reviews, looking through the user reviews, I would look at the review. One guy had an overly descriptive view, like, great gameplay, new this and that, and like he'd been playing the game for years, and I click his user to see what he's reviewed in the past. He's only reviewed two games. Modern Warfare 3 for the PlayStation and the Xbox. Both 10s. wonder who he works for. I, You know, I couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you who he works for. So, moving on from how <laughs> awful Modern Warfare is, critically acclaimed, most anticipated game in history, as their own advertising says, does that mean it's the most disappointing game in history? Hmm. As a function of expectation? Maybe that's the title of this uh, it video. It could be. Well, no, Modern the, the larger issue I want to get to focuses not so much on the users because, you know, I, again, I find it interesting that they knew, they had this sense of we were, we were skeptical and we were kind of expecting the worst, but we bought it hoping for the best. Right. Moving past that, what does it say about the video game rating industry that a game that is universally given a bad score, and we're not talking, we're not slanting the numbers, an average of two and a half right. across the three platforms. What does it say that all of these supposedly respected online gaming sites are giving it high scores? Not just high scores, hundreds, yes. 95 and above. What does it say to you, Woodsy, of the PC latest, that the video game rating, and this isn't something new, but what does it say to you when you see this kind of blatant disconnect between the people rating the game who play it and those who work for some kind of online site? Um, I can only see two issues with this. And this one issue one, I think everyone uh, kind of understands. That there might be, or there is, a strong conflict of interest for these guys who get their advertising and their paycheck by how much... Modern Warfare is advertising on their site, and then they have to turn around and review it. Yeah. So they're inclined to give it a good review, obviously. Yeah, and I, Second, I agree about advertising, but I wonder if it's one of those things where Battlefield 3 is going to advertise on their site no matter what. Right. <laughs> That's why I say, secondly, I think that you, as a reviewer, maybe a guy who's not going to play the whole thing front to back, that maybe he'll just, you know what, I'm going to give it a 9, because... These mechanics are tried and true. Are Everyone's playing them and enjoying them. I played it for two hours. It has the same mechanics plus all these things. So it must be at least a nine. Yeah. And just, you know, and it's pretty secure in the fact that the community is going to love it. So they're not going to look badly at your review. Like, mm -hmm. it's a safe bet to give it a high, high review. I have two considerations that I wonder about, and I don't have any kind of inside information as to if this actually goes on, but it's just two things I'm curious about. Let's say, um, 
you have some, this is called GameReviews.com. Is there some random website? And they give EA a couple bad ratings in a row. Could EA then go to them and say, you know what? We, we're going to give you an advanced copy of our next game, but you're going to get it a couple weeks after everyone else. Right. So your review of it's going to be about three weeks behind the times, and you're going to have to deal with the fact that people won't be going to your site for a review. I wonder if that is at all a factor of if we rev- if we give a developer or a publisher bad reviews consistently, are they going to delay advanced copies, or are they just going to you know for example as an executive of EA going to do fewer or not going to do interviews with a certain website right because they've been getting a lot of crap, and I mean I think we see that in the press more generally with companies and things like that people just you know and athletes especially they don't talk to certain reporters and there are good reasons for that I wonder if I can't imagine why it would be any different in the gaming industry. Because right. these game reviewers are essentially the reporters of the gaming industry. Right. You know, And I imagine that these developers have some grudges against some of them. That's true. Um, I also have another theory that I thought of today as a another discussion, if it requires a whole discussion by itself, but I'm not sure that it does. Does a person paying for the game or not paying for the game skew the review of the game? Like, if I get the game for free and go, yeah, it's a great game, I loved it. But if I'm playing Modern Warfare 2 and I th- I throw out another $60 for Modern Warfare 3 and it's basically the same game, hmm. now I'm kind of mad. Especially if you say to yourself, I only have enough money to buy one among Battlefield or Modern Warfare, I have to pick one. You, s- you shot your wad on Modern Warfare and you hate it, Yeah, you're probably going to be o- more like, overly bitter. Right. And I understand just as much as there are fanboys boosting the score... There may be people who would give it a three, but just because they hate EA, they give it a zero. I understand it could work both ways. Right. But I just think that even if those two were to cancel each other out, yeah, you'd still end up with a two and a half average. Right. No, but that's that's my question. Like, is the fact in the fact that these guys get the game for free, does that help the score along? Because it doesn't. You're not out anything if the game is bad. As a reviewer, you're not out anything. Yeah, yeah. the game was. Okay. You're not hurt. You didn't pay for it. Yeah. That's true. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I take I like my analogy for that in my head was if someone re-released Pac-Man, you would go, well, you can't give Pac-Man a bad rating. Yeah, it's Pac-Man. I, it's Pac-Man. It's a classic. What, you know, you would be crazy to give it a bad rating. What if Pac-Man was 60 bucks? I would say, it like, be this is a terrible awesome. game. Yeah. <laughs> no, it would be like, who could, sh- you know, like, you would give it a bad rating because you're like, it's not worth $60. Sorry. It is Pac-Man. It's a classic. It'd not have worth to $60. be World of Pac-Man where I could take 39 <laughs> other Pac-Men and women and raid. But otherwise, I'd hate it. So those are our thoughts on both the, the critical acclaim so far for Modern Warfare and the review industry. But there's something that... Woodsy had a great idea for how he views movies. And when I saw these user scores, it made me think immediately of that and how it also applies to video games. We're going to talk about that in the next discussion as kind of a part two. And I think you're really going to enjoy it because I I can already think of a a handful of examples. It does require its own video. Yeah, we'll, we'll explain that. So Modern Warfare 3, you love it, you hate it. We know you hate it because you think like us. (laughs) My name is Woodsy. My name is Shepard, and this is the PC Elitist, signing out.